most people tune in for the nonsense. If you want good chess, watch any other stream. You know? Eric's better than me. Amon's better than me. Caro's better than me. Bartholomew's better than me. Rosen's probably better than me. Um, Magnus is better than me. Uh, let's see. I mean, there's just, I mean, there's like 20 streamers that are, Benjamin Box better than me. If, if you want a good chess, you're not watching this stream. However, none of them can do nonsense like me. The chess bras try, but trying is the first step to failure. Uh, okay, last game. The, the game of the day, according to most people, but not according to the people who matter. And I don't know which game is more important. Probably Napoleon Yachi's win was more important because he, he has the tiebreak advantage. Um, this was a shocking result because, as it turns out, Fabiano, since he learned the rules of chess, has never lost with white in a slow game, ever. This is the first time Fabiano's ever lost with white. And, and ever. I can't say in 20. He's never lost with white. Unbelievable. In a slow game. Obviously, blitz, bullet, and rapid. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, are you good at bug house? No. Yeah, but I, I beat Fabiano, but I was white. So that's too bad. Yeah. You believe that except for one thing. That is correct. Slow and steady wins the race. Yeah. Okay. So, if you don't know who won this game yet, you know, are you kidding me? Okay. So... Now, in this position, uh, when there was a game between uh, Fabi and MVL, and it was a Nidorf, I said, these are the two best prepared Nidorf players in the world. And I got a lot of crap on YouTube saying, what about Anish Giri? And actually, you could say Anish Giri... You could say Vichy Anand, and there was a fifth person, and you could just argue any of them are the best. I don't know. But if you didn't like him and MVL, then we got Fabiano and Anish. So Anish plays different Sicilians, and he probably didn't want to walk into some crazy Fabiano one million move variation. So he played E6. And probably Fabiano expected the Knight Orf, but Fabiano knows everything really deep. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So he played this line instead. He can't play e5 because of queen a5 check. So now you can play e5. So he stops it. And in this position, Fabi played a3, which I guess is one of his pet lines. And Anish also plays the Sveshnikov. So after knight b5, black has two moves. And a lot of the games go this way. And we just transpose this Vashnikov. And what's funny is when, when Magnus played the straight up Sveshnikov in the world championship against Fabi, he beat me straight up. Check, check, check. Can't get rid of him. Fabi usually played knight d5 and or always played knight d5. And... Playing the move order Anish did, he avoids that. You can't play knight e5 because the move order of this game, this is designed to avoid that. Right? If you play here, here, there's no knight e5. So you just play this main line. Okay. So Fabi didn't want to go into that because he doesn't play that line. So he played a3, preventing bishop b4. Another variation which is possible... Anish would have played d6. Is bishop b4, and you get this position. Okay, and most grandmasters want white here, but some grandmasters play black. Some, not many. Okay, so he played a3, and I guess he's hoping Anish isn't super prepared for a3, but obviously the move is shallow and pedantic. A3 is not, that's not how you beat the Sicilian. Frankly, terrible. Okay. Right, and you guys are easily confused. Shocking. Because 
You think if somebody wrote a book on an opening or made a video that they're the world's leading authority. A lot of times, if you read a book on an opening by a grandmaster, the grandmaster is, hasn't written a word or seen any of it. There's a ghostwriter. They pay him $500 to use his name. And if he did write the book, he, you know, he's just using engines and computers and he doesn't care. Right? It's rare that somebody who writes a book on an opening is the world's leading authority because then they wouldn't write a book on the opening. They wouldn't make a video. Right? So people who aren't very good at chess, who aren't playing the top 10, top 20 in the world, they make those kind of books and videos. Good example, Ginger GM. He says, play this stupid opening, play this stupid opening, look how it wins by force. And it doesn't matter because he's not playing the top 10, 20, 30 players in the world. So you guys eat it up, right? So, yeah, if Geary has articles and videos on the Night Orf, doesn't mean he's the world's leading authority on the Night Orf. Kasparov could be the world's leading authority on the Night Orf still. But, you know, he probably forgot because he's old. Okay. Uh, that's correct about Gotham chess. Yeah. Yeah, people who tell you about openings, they just want your money. Unlike me, I would never want your money. Never. I'll show you how much I don't want your money. Terrible. Frankly, delicious. All right. Uh, no, Niter's dead and rather pungent, so he's not the world's leading authority anymore. You get a sub, you get a sub, you get a sub. We got to get to 3,200 somehow. It's not from you guys. Okay. Uh, Gotham Chess has a course on the Owens defense. Yeah. I wrote, I wrote a, a, I made a series of videos for chess.com on the Philidor. And I knew the Philidor really well in 2011 when I played a match against Ray Robson. I was prepared to the teeth, and I drew easily. Then I played it against Sam Savian, and I also drew, like, a little while later. And then I don't know if I played it. I played another time, and I beat some kid in Chicago who's, like, 2,300. But, I mean, I played the, the Philidor in slow-rated chess five times in my life. But I still made a 10-video series. Yeah. I watched those episodes. Not all of them. Boo, boo. The more you donate, the more money I have. Although I'm the only one donating. Boo, boo. Okay. Back to whatever it is I'm doing. There should be seven. And they played very boring with white having the move A3 in, which is nothing. So blacks come out of the opening pretty well. Yoka Premi subscribed. Hooray. Was it going to throw the fine gold defense? Probably Esserman. Okay, queen d3 is unusual trying to get, you know, Anish out of his comfort zone. Because if Anish did prepare for a3, he didn't prepare for queen d3. 1,000 cents to do Go, Laszlo Damas. Yeah. Laszlo Damas, you did a good job a few years ago on the Chappelle show when you predicted that Schwarzenegger and Shriver would divorce. I can't believe you you figured that out. That was genius. Colmanosaurus gifted a sub. Hooray. You're the best. Anisha's the best player in his chair? What? Yeah. Anisha's fancy and schmancy. Okay, we're off Chess TV, so we have no viewers now. 3,300. Terrible. I just lost all my viewers. Then Felix Frias is like, you have a lot of viewers. Had a lot of viewers. Polar Bear ABC, 1,000 centidues. And BC turns to AD. How you doing? Um, now, don't cut my hair. I'm growing it out. Uh, let's see. Everyone's the best player in their chair. No. I asked one of the kids in my camp a couple of years ago, wasn't a good player. I said, are you the best player in your chair? And they said, no. Truth hurts. Man. Okay. 
I need to play bishop d7. Pretty boring. Good. f4. Put it in f. e5. Going from boring to exciting in one move. Now, in this position, Fabi played a very antsy positional move, possibly still his prep. I would not consider this move if I was white. It wouldn't be a move I consider, but he played it. And the engine says it's good. So I'm guessing it's his prep. Um, yeah, I would either play knight f3 or knight b3. I wouldn't have white in this position. This is Sicilian. Probably knight f3. But he took the knight. And normally in the Sicilian, when you play knight takes c6 with the knight white, that, that's not a good move. Okay. So black equalized pretty easily. Castled. All of his pieces are developed. Foothold in the center. Open B line. A3 silly. The queen's not on the best square. And it's hard for anybody to do anything. So it's about equal. Finally, he castles. Takes, takes. Bishop E6. Wants to play knight D7 and knight E5 probably. And or D5. Queen G3. Um... Yeah, the queen's probably better on g3 than d3. Now, when I was watching the game live, I saw what the engine wanted to play, and I said, say, what? And later, Nigel Short tweeted, if Anish played the engine move here, which is h5, said, then they would have to get the rubber gloves out. And you guys don't know what that means, but I did. Uh, there was some noise. What happened here? Uh, I heard a noise, but I don't see something. Oh, there it is. No, that's not it. That's not it. What just happened? I don't, uh, I, I don't, uh, see what happened. Was that my phone? Is that what the noise was? Man, maybe it was my phone. I should have left my phone at home. This is a disaster. Let's see. What did my daughter say? Oh. Okay. Man, my son sent me 17 pictures from New York. Wow, these are cool. Man, those are great pictures. I wonder where he is. They're walking in the woods somewhere. Now they're on the beach? God damn. He's having fun in New York. Terrible. Foosball, frisbee. Man. Aw. It's his sister and her three kids and Spencer. Aw. Man, those are great picks. Man. So many picks. Okay. So. What? I don't know. I mean, he's visiting his sister in Brooklyn. So I don't know where the pictures were taken. Um, anyway. So what Nigel meant was, you know, Geary would have electronics, you know, where the sun don't shine if he played H5. Because no human would play H5 or consider H5. And the engine says that's the best move. Queen here, king here. Now, there's a funny example of H5 I think Ullman was white, unless I'm wrong. But Fisher was black. I'm right about that. I think it was Ullman, but I could be wrong. Fisher went to play h6, like here, but the h6 pawn was hanging because the g pawn was pinned. And then he was like, oh. And then he just went to h5, which was horrible. I mean, just ridiculous move. But he touched move, and he lost that game. I think it was Ullman, but I'm not sure. Could be. Okay. So knight d7, the point of bishop e6. The bishop has all these squares. The knight has e5, etc. Now, in this position, this was actually quite funny. Uh, or was it this position or later? No, it was this position. Yeah. Black played rook e8, and I was like, what? But I have an engine, so I can answer my own question. And my question was... What happens uh, after queen b6 check, uh, king here, I guess. Yeah, queen takes b2. 
the C pawn's hanging, the A pawn's hanging. And after rook B1, you can't take on C2 because your queen's trapped. But you could take on A3. Now you play knight D5, discovered attack on the queen, and this is with check, you know, Zwisch and Zug, so white's winning. And Geary saw that, and that's why he played rook E8. Now his bishop's protected, so he can play check in here. And that's why those guys are better than you. I don't mean as chess players. They're better human beings than you. Well, I don't have any Perrier. Yeah, terrible. Ah, oh, frankly, delicious. Yeah, so that's why he played rookie eight. Yeah. Okay. Who would see that? Super GMs see a lot of stuff. And it doesn't happen in the game. But see, when Morphe beat the gawking rabble, they would play these bad moves that he saw were bad, and they didn't. Now, the same thing happens, except the super GMs see why the variations are bad, and they don't do them. However, you don't see it because it didn't happen. So then you might be wondering, why didn't he do that? And then you can't figure it out. Now that you have an engine, you can figure it out. I couldn't figure it out. And so I could have looked for 10 minutes and figured it out, but the engine took one second. That was much quicker than me looking at it. I'm busy. Okay, so that's why he played Rook there. All right. Now he played King H1, which is fine. I like putting the King on H1. Typical Sicilian you know, motif. Queen B8, defending and attacking. And now, um, it's funny, you have B4 and B3. And the engine says they're about the same. Probably if you let it think forever, B3 is better. But he played B4. Maybe that's better. I don't know. Knight E5. That's why he played Knight E7. Quadrupling on the E file. Um, so you can't make that joke. Okay. And the position's about equal. The engine slightly prefers white. B5. Good move. Rook c8, very good move. Never trade. Takes, takes. And this seems to have helped black. Uh, the b5, rook c8 takes. Because this is all terrible. But Fabi wanted the d5 square. And then some. Because the pawn was on c6. That's why knight c6 is um, anti-positional. So he played knight d5. If black ever takes... He gives away the white squares and white has the two bishops. And <clears throat> the engine wants to always play bishop f8. It's a little scary because you're allowing that at some point. So Geary played queen f8, defending everything. If you're going to lose one of your bishops for the knight, you want to lose that one. This bishop is fantastic, and this bishop is blocked by a pawn. So now that he's defended everything, he wants to take on c2. So he played c3, and I think the engine wanted to play c4. And that's a very tough move to find, because black can play knight takes c4. And it says that black is white is better, but not much, after this sequence. And obviously, to a GM, this position is drawn. The engine was like, I like white. Then the engine thinks for and says, all right, it's a draw. Likes white because white has a potential attack, and attacks work better when there's opposite colored bishops. On the other hand, these pawns are weak, so it's actually equal. Okay. But instead, he played c3 because he wants to win <clears throat> because that's the tournament situation. Both sides have to win. And if you don't win the tournament, you, you don't play for a world championship. So you have to do that. Okay, he doubled up on the bubble up. Now c4 is reasonable now. Taking this is reasonable. But he played rook c1, which is very passive. Very strange move to defend the pawn in such a passive way. That's, that's not good. Okay, knight g6. He wants the bishop. He says, you can't have my bishop. Plays another passive move. Bishop h4 is a good move. Queen has to move away. Rook c5, stopping this, pressuring this. 
And now it's clear because Fabi played rook c1, bishop d2, he doesn't have a kingside attack. That's why he played f4. He wants to, you know, get some pieces over here. But black has a lot of pieces over here. And white's pieces are here. So he doesn't have an attack. The only thing white has as compensation for his three isolated pawns is this knight on d5. Fantastic knight. However, the engine likes black because black has a good square for his knight too. And these pawns are hard to get at. These pawns, not so hard. So black's better. Okay, he played c4. Okay, that makes the bishop a lot better. Defends the knight some more. Put it in h. Gives his king luft. Wants to play bishop g5. And he does play bishop g5. Okay. Now the pawn here, you might say double pawns. I'm low rated. I don't like double pawns. Well, Geary's not low rated. Geary likes that his knight has the f4 square and h4 square. And he could play g4 later. So this pawn, which does nothing, is doing a lot now. Protecting here, protecting here. G4 is coming. So that, that's good for black. Stops knight f4. Okay, he attacks the pawn. He defends the pawn. And this pawn. Everything's defended. Rick goes back to d1, the half-open file. If Farnsley is here, he would explain about this pawn to you. And he takes the knight finally. He's had enough. He had all he can stand. He can't stand no more. Now, Popeye, the cartoon, traumatized me as a kid. And it gave me some wrong information. Popeye ate a can of spinach, and then he'd kick your ass. And canned spinach is the worst thing that's ever happened on the earth. I never knew when I was a kid, you just get fresh spinach, and it's frankly delicious. I just thought there was canned spinach. Because, you know, what do I know? I'm six, seven years old. And I'm like, how does Papa eat that crap? Right? Spinach is the worst thing ever. That's what I thought as a kid. Then, and now spinach is like one of my three favorite things. Just not, not canned spinach. Not, not that. Spinach is frankly delicious. But, yeah, can't, yeah. Horrible. So Popeye tricked me. Okay. Now, again, this is a Sophie's choice. Everything is bad. The engine really likes black. Black's knight is great. And this bishop is behind all these pawns. Terrible. Took with the e-pawn. That's the engine's first choice when I did it. Knight f4. Knight f5 is also... Knight e5 is also really good. And you can see this is weak... This is weak. This is amazing. And these, these pieces aren't doing anything. So black has a, white has a big advantage. Okay. Now, what I read on the internet, we'll get to the key position, was here. This is what I saw on the internet. And they said, here Fabi made the losing move. So they don't like that that Anish is cashing in by taking material and getting, you know, and White's position is still bad. So Fabi's technique here, I'm sorry, Anish's technique here was wrong. He shouldn't have given up his A pawn and traded all the pieces. Obviously, if you trade pawns and trade pieces, it's more likely a draw. And the people on the internets, they said Queen C7 is probably a draw. Probably and frankly. And the reason is if you take on a3, if, and uh, you can't take on d6. This is why Fabi didn't play queen c7. He saw this. I know he saw this. Rook takes f3 wins. Always sack the exchange. Obviously, rook takes f3 mate, and g takes f3 also gets checkmated. You're threatening queen f1 mate, queen g2 mate, and the engine announces mate. It's over. Mate and five. And I'm sure Fabi saw that. The difference between what Fabi did and what this does is white can play h4, which, you know, attacks all the key points and gives him luft. And the reason this is different than queen f2 
is if Black plays the same move he played in the game, Queen e5, with the Queen on f2, Black's winning. The queen on c7, we have check and here. And it's a draw. There's nothing left. It's, everything's equal. Okay, I mean, Black's slightly better, but it, it'll be a draw. And I guess he missed that. I don't know. Probably in time trouble. Definitely in time trouble. So he played queen f2, which is very passive. And then this happened, and he's completely lost. There's no queen d8 check. So that one mistake, queen f2, sealed his fate. Now he's just lost. The bishop is terrible. White's king is worse than black's king. Black's knight is fantastic. Black's queen is fantastic. Black's rook is fantastic. And he's up material. Okay, so they trade. He threatens, you know, come in, sort of. And Black's like, all right, I'll go there. And this was very funny. In this position, uh, the engine says these moves are like plus 1,000. And Geary played rook a2. The idea is if you take the rook, then we, you know, we give you a little check. We give you another little check. And we, you know, probably I would repeat. And then we take the bishop and you resign. So you can't take the rook. And when rook a2 was played, the engine wanted to move the bishop, probably, you know, here or here, threatening mate. Um, so after here, for example, if you take this, I play check, and then I, I take the rook. This is actually a draw because black has a perpetual. So after the bishop moves, you have to stop mate, and black is still winning. The best move is to go back showing that rook a2 wasn't all it's cracked up to be. But repeating's okay. It's not a, not a big deal. So after rook a2, Fabi played rook b1, another attempt to punish the back rank and force rook a8. So rook a2 wasn't his shining moment. It didn't work. Okay, unfortunately, it just repeated, so he's just completely winning. Yeah, and this king h f7 has nothing to do with the king. It has to do with playing rook h8 check and, and winning. That's what this move has to do with, you know. That's why the rook's good on a8, not on a2, because this is where you want your rook. And the engine says plus a billion. Rook e3, check, king there. He played rook here to stop this. Um... Yeah, if you play this, I can take it, and then I can take on f5. That's probably not good. But Fabi finished in style, knight g2. As in the famous game, God versus damn. Yeah. And now, Fabi played his best move of the game. He resigned. That is correct. This is ridiculous. It's the most lost position ever. Computer announces mate. This doesn't work because queen c1 check. If king takes g2, checkmate with advantage. And if queen here, tactics 101, rook h1, check. Winning everything. So after knight takes g2, black is two pawns up and threatening knight takes e3, discovered check, queen takes e3, and obviously knight f4 check and knight h4 check also win. Uh, so the best line, according to the engine, not me, is to trade queens to avoid getting mated and play down a rook. And, you know, that's, he's, Bobby's not going to do that. So, excellent game from Geary. And now it's a two-horse race. Geary and Nepomniachtchi. And unfortunately for Geary, over a year ago, he lost to Nepomniachtchi in this tournament. Never said that before. And that's the first tie break is head-to-head. -head. So if they tie for first, Napomniachi wins on tie breaks and plays Magnus at the end of the year. So Anish needs to go 2-0. If Anish goes 2-0, Jan has to go 1.5 half, half. If he goes 1-1, one, one, he don't win. So he got to go 2-0 to put the pressure on him. Going 2-0 in this tournament, c'est pas facile. You can tell the MVL that. Technically, MVL can win the tournament. But you have to, you know, it's, it's less than 1% chance. And Fabi actually can't win the tournament. If Fabi wins his next two games, 
he cannot win the tournament. So he's out. So mathematically, MVL could win the tournament, but that would be nuts. So only, only Anisha and Napomniachi can win. And obviously, Jan being half a point ahead and winning on tie breaks means he's probably going to win until he doesn't. 